David here with Figboot on Pens. Uh, today I have a pen for you from another manufacturer that was new to me. Uh, and that manufacturer is Le Bon. Uh, and the pen I have is called the Flora. Uh, what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about Le Bon uh, and then go over the parts and the features of the Flora. I'll talk about what I uh, care for and what I don't care for about the pen. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Uh, I first became aware of this brand while at the DC show this past year. Uh, they've been around for a while, uh, but they did have a large booth there and some very interesting pens. Uh, Le Bon is based out of Taiwan, and it was founded back in 1981 by the brothers John and Charles Hu. Uh, over the years, they've produced uh, like things like a private label brand for the Vatican Museum, as well as producing pens with um, some elaborate metal designs and hand-painted art. The Le Bon pen I have for you today arrived in this box. Then inside we have the actual box. Uh, it's kind of made of like a rubbery type material that feels kind of cool. And on the front it says Le Bon in 1981, the year the company was founded. Then inside we have the pen. Let's set that aside just for one second. Uh, the, the inside of the box is kind of a nice felt-like material. Uh, and then underneath the tray, we have a cartridge. Then we have a little medallion that came with the pen. And then we have a, a use and care guide with that's written in several languages. Um, one thing that was helpful in here uh, was a little reminder that if you happen to take a fountain pen on an airplane, that you want to store it nib up, which is true. Um, with the changes in pressure you experience in a flight, if the nib is facing up, then as the air expands, air is what it will be expelled from the pen. And if it's facing down, or nib down, uh, then as the air expands, it will potentially push out ink from your pen. So um, I've never had any issue uh, with uh, uh, with pens as long as I uh, keep the uh, nib facing up. So that's a good tip. Okay, so let's take a look at a pen. This is the Le Bon Flora. Um, the Flora is made from a clear Italian resin uh, and it has a chrome plated brass overlay. Uh, the trim is chrome, chrome plated, plated as well. Um, it is also available with a matte black finish, which I, uh, I do think looks rather sharp. Now, in regard to this overlay, I'm not sure of the exact name for this pattern. I've seen it described as floral and uh, lantern-like. I'm sure there's an exact name for it, though. Um, I, I like the feeling and the texture of this overlay. And even though it is a solid brass, uh, it doesn't add an inordinate amount of weight to the pen. So let's start by taking a look at the finial. Uh, on the end of the cap, it's inlaid with the Le Bon L and a branch design. Uh, you know, I like the grid pattern in the background as well. That's something a little bit different. Uh, and then we have the clip here. Uh, the clip starts off rather wide and then kind of tapers down rather thin. And then on the end of the clip, there's a ball. Uh, and the clip functions just fine. Uh, the cap is actually straight for the duration of the overlay. Then it angles down slightly to a rather smooth transition to the barrel, which is again straight until we get to the end here where there is a small step down to the end of the barrel where it tapers down just slightly. Uh, and then the edges of the barrel are slightly rounded and the end is essentially flat. The cap twists off. Now, it's a little hard to see with this overlay, but you know, a constant beef that I've had uh, and with uh, fountain pens that are um, uh, clear demonstrators are the orientation of the nibs. Um, while caps typically have multiple threads, uh, as is the case with this pen, that can lead to multiple, multiple orientations of the nib, I kind of prefer to have my nib facing up, lining up with the clip. And as long as one of those orientations provide that, then I can decide how much, you know, how anal I want to be in regard to having everything match up. Uh, and on the floor, it actually provides that. One of the orientations allows for the nib and the clip to align. Now, that might just be uh, you know, that might be intentional, uh, or it just might be the luck of the draw. Uh, and this specific pen just happens to line up, which is fine by me. Uh, after you remove the cap, you can see this very nice rhodium-plated medium steel nib. Uh, I believe this is a Bach nib, and I, uh, I like that the markings on this nib are stamped rather than engraved. Uh, I think the stamping looks a lot nicer on a nib. 
There is one thing, however. Uh, at the end of the Laban name is a circle that would normally contain an R to indicate a registered trademark, but the circle on the nib is actually blank. Uh, it's like they neglected to add the actual R. So, um, the rhodium plated steel nib is actually very pleasant. Uh, it's decently smooth and provides a touch of feedback. And for a steel nib, I, I'd categorize this as very good. Uh, I believe it's available in fine and medium as well as broad. And then here's a look at the plastic feet. Then we have the section, and I will say that I'm not a fan of slick metal sections, but I can understand why they went with that choice for the design of the floor. The chrome-plated section matches the look and feel of the rest of the pen very well. Um, having this concave slope helps a bit, and while I do find this section to be a little slick, it's not too bad. Um, the section transitions into the threads, which I don't find to be sharp at all, you know, I did notice this, however. On the left, you can see here that there are the cap threads, which are on the outside of the barrel. And on the right, you can see through the transparent acrylic, the internal threads that secure the section to the barrel. Um, however, when you remove the section, you can see that the internal threads only extend out to about the same part of the pen as the external threads. Um, so that the internal threads extend out maybe a little over a quarter inch further than necessary into the barrel. So over here, you're actually seeing threads which are never used. And now I know that threads need to extend a little bit past where they will be used, but it just seems like a bit much here. I just feel it's a lot of thread. Um, the Flora does post. Um, I wouldn't say that it posts uh, deeply, but it is secure. Uh, and I will typically use this pen unposted, mainly because uh, I like the feeling of the texture overlay in my non-writing hand. Uh, and the end of the cap is a little bit uh, on the heavy side, and so it does throw off the balance just a little bit. The floor is a cartridge converter pen. You know, I do wish this was a piston filler. Um, I, I've never really been a, a big fan of seeing the converter through a, uh, a, a clear barrel, a demonstrator barrel. Uh, now... Uh, if you remember from a couple of reviews ago, uh, Nakia actually offers uh, a Mackie converter with uh, very interesting designs painted on them. And while I think those converters are cool, I thought it was a bit of a waste because you only saw it when you were inking up the pen. You didn't see it all the time because, you know, Nakia doesn't offer any clear demonstrators. Uh, you know, a pen like the Flora would be a perfect design for that. Uh, you'd be able to see a cool design on the converter at all times. Now, the Nakia Mackie converters are designed for the Platinum proprietary system, so those won't work in a standard international pen like this. Uh, and having a red ink in this pen does provide a pop of color, though. You know, while I wouldn't categorize this as a, a feminine design, and I don't like categorizing things as male as feminine, I will say that a number of women in my office were intrigued by this pen. Uh, you know, I use a fountain pen at work every day, and most of the time folks won't ask me about them. They're just used to seeing me use a variety of pens, uh, and most people just don't care. Uh, but the days that I've taken the floor to work, I've actually had a number of folks ask about it and want to check it out. So it's a design that garners a bit of attention. Uh, you know, I think the flora looks interesting, but, you know, at first I, I really didn't feel it matched up well with my personal tastes. And, you know, there is a big difference between a pen that is bad and one is that is bad for me personally. Um, I, I do think there is a, li a lot to like about this pen, though. Um, it just doesn't necessarily match up with some of my personal style tastes. Um, and while I haven't been that much into pens with metal overlays, I, you know, there is a Visconti Ripple that has an overlay that I've had my eye on. And a, a while back, I found one at a decent price and decided not to pull the trigger. And I kind of regret that because they're selling for a significantly higher price now. But, you know, hindsight is always 2020. Speaking of price, um, the list price of the Le Bon Flora is... Uh, $300, which means that you'll find it at retails for retailers for about $240. Um, if you care to have a 14 karat gold nib, I believe those are available for an additional $120. Uh, I, I believe that $240 is on the high side of uh, in regard to uh, value for the flora, but I, I don't feel it's outrageous. Um, the pen is very well crafted, uh, and I would categorize the box steel nib as very good. Um, the overlay is interesting and eye-catching as well. 
And while initially I felt that the style wasn't necessarily for me, I will say it's grown on me. And I, I appreciate it a bit more uh, than when I first received the pen. And the more I use it, the more I like it. So there you have the Le Bon Flora. So now it's time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Le Bon Flora. Uh, here it is with a uh, Aurora Optima. Uh, and then the rest of the pens I have here are basically going to be my pens for this upcoming week. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram at figboot11, I'll typically uh, show what pen I am taking to work with me every single week or every single day. Uh, and these five are the ones that are going to be coming up this week. Uh, the very first one is the uh, ASC uh, Bologna Arco. Uh, and then next up, we have the Visconti Homo Sapiens Dark Age. And then there is the uh, Carolina Pens Aiken. And then a Pilot Custom uh, 92, or CH92. Uh, and then finally, a uh, Takia Spectrum. So those are the pens that I'm going to be uh, using uh, each day this week. I try to come up with a uh, kind of a flow and a variety of pens each week. So here we go with the writing sample for the Le Bon Flora. Uh, and this is a medium steel nib. Uh, and the ink that I'm using today is uh, Diamine Firestorm Red. Uh, this is what the ink looks like. Uh, this is one of Diamine's uh, shimmering inks. Uh, you can kind of see a little bit here, the shimmer and the lights. But I will say this, this ink does have a high amount of shimmer to it. Uh, and while shimmering inks uh, aren't necessarily my thing, um, I do find this one to be a little bit more subtle. And, uh, and I have enjoyed using this ink, especially in this pen. Uh, here it is what it compares to uh, Diamine Poppy Red, which I think is very, very similar to uh, the Firestorm Red. Uh, and then here's another one of my favorite reds, with is, which is uh, Thornton's Red, which is just a little bit darker. This is what the bottle looks like uh, that it comes in. Uh, plenty deep uh, and plenty wide enough for just about any uh, pen that you have. And if you shake it up here, you can kind of see all of the shimmer that is in there. I'll shake a little bit. And you can see all the, all the shimmer which is in there that looks kind of cool. Okay, so here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, I mentioned it in the review, but um, I would categorize this steel Bach nib as very good. Uh, that it uh, is decently smooth with just a, a little bit of feedback. You're not going to get a ton of line variation out of here, but you can push a little bit out. Uh, in regard to ink flow, um, I, I do find this to be... Uh, 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 on the decent side in regard to ink flow. There hasn't been any issues with that. And in regard to reverse writing, it's a little bit on the scratchy side, but it does lay down a very nice extra, extra fine line. And in regard to some fast writing, Um, I haven't had any issues at all. I haven't had any issues with uh, any skipping uh, or, or hard starts or anything like that in regard to this nib. Like I said, that I, I would categorize this as a very good steel nib. So there we have the Le Bon Flora, uh, it's a pen that uh, has a, a very interesting overlay design uh, and, uh, and performs very well in addition. So thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you later.